We are now ranked number one on most search engines if you search snow windows. Hello and welcome to this BT podcast series where we meet with business owners who are using technology to keep their companies thriving. They have some great tips to share and are ready to inspire you with small changes you can make which can have a big impact. Today we are talking SEO, search engine optimization, a huge revenue stream that you could be missing out on if you're not using it to its full advantage. Someone who knows a lot about getting the most out of SEO is Kerry Ackling, the brains behind Snow Windows, the number one snow spray company in the world. She's taken a drunken idea and turned it into the number one Google ranked business in her sector. Today she's here to pass on some wisdom on how they made that happen. Welcome, Kerry. So tell me, how instrumental has SEO been to your business? It's been absolutely vital, if I'm honest. It was a bit of an unseen need for our business because it's not something I initially thought about, but it's absolutely vital because it's how our customers find us. We realised we needed to build a website. I didn't know how to build a website, so I did what most business owners would do and look up someone that could build a website for me. But... Because we needed to update and change all the time, it became really costly because I had to keep messaging that website builder Mm. and say, you know, could you add this bit? Could you change this image? And I started looking at other websites that were similar to ours or similar sort of Mm. ilk. And I then started looking at the bottom, powered by. And then I thought, oh, I'm going to look into that e-commerce platform because that's powered by. And a lot of these have guided walkthroughs before you even sign up to them and the one I particularly chose was one that I thought that made a lot of sense the video that they showed me before I signed up made complete sense to me the thing that it has dramatically changed is it's increased our website visits by 55 percent wow and that is where you know I haven't had to take any additional time out of my day but I've increased that traffic to my website. What tips would you give to a small business that is looking to find themselves much higher in the search rankings? It's your storefront, effectively. So it's what your customers, clients see when they first arrive at that storefront. They want to see it clean, tidy, easy to navigate. If you are the one behind updating your website, looking at what your customer needs. What is that customer journey? What does that look like? As a business owner, you think, well, my website makes complete sense to me. For me, I always get my mum to do it. I'm like, mum, can you go on the website and find snow spray tools? And she's like, nope, I can't find it. I'm like, right, I need to change it then. For us, it's kind of tricky. We've got three arms to our business. So we've got the bespoke spraying, then we've got the product sales of stencils, and then we have the courses. So it's like, how do I create a website that caters to all three mm, of those potential clients? Do you think it's a good idea then to have videos and images actually embedded on the website? Because I know some people are concerned about the impact it has on the speed of the website. If it's not uploaded correctly in the correct format, then that will slow down your speed of your website. So I would just say they give you guidelines. They'll say, you know, if you upload a five meg at this ratio, then it won't slow your website down at all. And they've got these things like load carriers now, which sort of allow, especially if you're going through an e-commerce platform, it won't overload the site and cause a delay in it loading. When I transitioned my website from like a web builders site to an actual e-commerce site, I noticed it said, would you like to continue to call your image IMG0035162? And then when I looked at the benefits of actually calling, I don't know, for, for ours, for example, Snow Windows Grinch picture, what happens is when someone puts that into a search engine, then it's immediately going to direct that person to your website and that picture. And you can also add into the description keywords that you think people would search for if they were trying to find your business. For example, you're a plumber. Um, You could put leaky toilet in the description or tap dripping and then add that as part of the keywords. So when someone's looking at your website, they don't see that, Mm. but those keywords are in the description of the image that they do see. 
So it sort of directs people to you in a really indirect way, unobvious way, but it boosts that ranking up on the search engines. So like a lot of people, if there's an event coming for the following year, so for example, we would do some festive 2025, Mm -hmm. our images have that in now because next year people are going to be looking at it and the longer that keyword has been in there and the more that keyword is used we're going to come higher up on those search engines but the difference that it makes is huge so it's well worth you investing your time in doing something like that stuff Mm -hmm. so tell me though imagine you are i don't know you are like you said a plumbing business how would you even go about finding what keywords would be relevant to your business keywords are how you would like to describe your company to your clients, to your audience. There are a couple of uh, websites that will help you with that. So what they do is they use the analytics of what people have searched for. So you could pop in, I'm a plumbing business. What are the key words that people would use to search plumbing business? And they'll give you all the answers. And then you can pop those into your descriptions of your pictures or your descriptions of your video, or potentially use them in the wording on your website. So if someone, for argument's sake, has put leaky tap, you can put in a a page of your website, we will fix any leaky tap. So then you're using that terminology that people are searching for. So it comes up. Where do you put your keywords? You put your keywords in the back end of your website. So image descriptions, um, image labeling, and content on your website, blogs, descriptions, page titles and that is how a search engine takes people to find you for us we are a seasonal business so at different times a year we're focusing on different seasons so i'm changing those keywords i'm changing the banners on our website which then helps us become more searchable around that certain time of year now i'm curious could you say you've got these sort of three different areas that you're essentially marketing to What impact is that having on the level of keywords then that you're having to put in? Because you're almost going for different segments. So that's where I guess you understand your audience, you understand what they are searching. Mm -hmm. For example, if you're at home wanting to get an art installation of a snow window, you probably have very different needs to a business that wants to get a snow window to promote their business during the festive season. So you have to just gear those words to the right target audience. Fascinating. So I assume that blogging is very critical when it comes to keywords. Tell us a bit about that. Blogging is brilliant. Um, I once went to a a business seminar and there was a guy there and he was an LA-based pool cleaner and he talked about the importance of blogs. So what this guy did was he wrote a blog about all his competitor pool cleaners very complimentary. You know, this pool cleaner's great. This pool cleaner's brilliant. They use this machine. They use that machine. And the very clever thing that he got out of it was whenever anyone searched those top pool cleaners in LA, they would get directed Mm. to his website, his page saying how fantastic they are. And, you know, he got an awful lot of inquiries about that. So blogging is a really, really great way to sort of compliment your competitors but also utilise that in, as a description and a, a sort of encouragement for people to go to your website. Tell me, what is the importance of backlinks? A backlink is where a website links to your website. Mm-hmm. And this can be done in a blog, as a video, as an article, an interview like this potentially, mm-hmm. that could link back to your website. And that drives the traffic from their website to yours. It establishes a credibility in your business. So Google will see that and say, oh, right, okay, so they've got a link from this website, that website. Mm. They're a business we want to recommend, we want to suggest. And they are using that link as an element of trust, that there's points of value in your website that is of interest or relevant to the, to the type of business that you are. That helps you go up in the search engine. If you've got a backlink from a website, they're saying this company's trustworthy, then your ranking will go up. So can you share a little bit about how you've managed to successfully get these backlinks for yourself 
and how might other businesses be able to achieve this? For us, we've we've been really, really fortunate to have a lot of media exposure. So that's been sort of responsible for an awful lot of our backlinks and the highest drive of traffic to our website. For example, like if we've been in a national newspaper and they've done a backlink to us, that's really helped. But I guess when I started out, I would start writing to festive bloggers who would write, you know, what you need to know for this festive season. And I would say, hey, this is what we do. Have you ever thought about suggesting the use of snow spray to your followers? So for them, they're instantly like, oh, this is something new and different. I can write about it. People are going to want to read about it. And then they would refer to us and give us a backlink. So that's kind of where it all started. Because of the effort that we've put in and the time and energy we've put into our search engine optimization, we are now ranked number one on most search engines if you search snow windows. So tell me, what's next for you with SEO and the business and how do you hope to move forward with it? I feel that SEO is changing all the time. Well, business is changing all the time. I think the key is not to have all my eggs in one basket and to be available on several different avenues so that people can find us. Key trends following key trends. Mm. For me, it's festive season, so those key trends might be you know, certain colours or certain styles. What are the three key pieces of advice that you'd give to a business regarding SEO? SEO optimization is, needs to be constantly kept on top of, not just with the trends, but the way people search. You know, some people use their voices to search Mm. these days, some people type, and that's forever evolving and always changing. So you always need to be on top of that. Keywords. Keywords are absolutely vital. And the one real takeaway I had that I learned was naming your images. And I'm sure that is one of the major reasons why our traffic has increased by 50%. And I would say the third point would be backlinks. Reach out to other businesses. They love to network. Small businesses are more than happy to network with other small businesses because it helps them, it helps you. So don't be afraid to ask people, hey, would you mind giving me a backlink? I can do the same for you. Most people would absolutely be over the moon to do so. If you are interested in learning more about how BT can support your business, visit business.bt.com and search digital skills.